doing more for the elderly. Can you can you expand on that? Volusia County in, in 2000 had a Crimes Against Seniors program. The program has been cut, disbanded, and brought down to the road level where the burglary investigators and the deputies now are investigating. Volusia County is approximately 52% senior. Every 45 seconds in the United States, a senior is being victimized. If Volusia County is approximately 52% senior, why would you get rid of that unit? That unit is essential to the well-being of their safety because every 45 seconds, somebody is victimizing a senior. I mean, they're, they're, they're uh, going in their houses, they're taking their money, they're scamming them, saying that we can fix your roof, we can fix your door, they go in, they take their money, they leave. We must do something, okay? And it's not happening. Let's look at crimes against children. We have a task force. Let's look at the gang unit. We have a task force ran by the FBI. A task force, the crimes against uh, juvenile or, or, or uh, crimes against children. A task force run by the state. We need to get rid of these task forces because these task forces, even though they specialize in that specific area, they're not working the whole whole county area. The crimes against seniors. When was the last time we had a pedophile staying here? We had one six months ago in, in Deltona. When did we have one before that? Eleven years ago. And I just received information saying that towards the end of the year or towards election time, we're going to have another one. Okay? We need to get rid of the bureaucracy that's inside this agency. That's, you know, we had somebody in there now 42 years. What changes can, can be made? You've been there 42 years. We need somebody that's going to come in that's fresh and new. Somebody that's going to, that's not part of that, that cronyism and go in there and say, this is what's happening, this is what we're going to do, and because we need to get back to law enforcement. We need to get rid of politics, and we need to get back down and dirty and get into law enforcement, and that's what I want. Uh, you have had the opportunity, and as you have shared with me, you're somewhere, you try to be at some activity at least every day somewhere around the county. Uh, what are you hearing? What are the people saying to you uh, as they, you know, as you meet them, as you greet them, as you share your ideas with them? What, what's some of the feedback that you're getting? Well, what I'm hearing basically is that the current administration is their friend, okay? I'm looking at what do you want? Do you want a, a politician? Do you want a friend? Or do you want a deputy sheriff coming to your house that is properly trained, knows their job, and is going to handle the job the correct way? I'm hearing that it is time for change. It is time for somebody else to come into the office and make a difference, a new perspective. And I'm looking at new leadership and new direction for Volusia County. Before I can do that, I need their help. I need everybody's help out there. Because it's time that we took a stance and said, no more. My life is in danger. I mean, look at the crossing guards. I'm not saying my life, meaning the citizens' lives are in danger. Mm -hmm. Because they're caught in the middle of the crossfire of all these people that's out there committing crimes. Crossing guards. Come on, we've, we've gotten rid of so many. We've, we've terminated so many crossing guards out here. Why? And how many, how many kids have, have gotten killed? going to school and coming home from school, okay, you know, they say, well, they, they wasn't in the school zone area, they were outside the school zone area. But crossing guards is essential to the safety of our kids. And I have a program for that. Why don't we use the, the necessary resources that we have right now for crossing guards? We have COPs out there that are roaming around Volusia County checking houses. I have issues with that. I'll get to that in a minute. They're roaming around checking houses. To me, that should be a deputy's job, not a COP. I can, I can restructure and reassign COPs to the crossing guard area and help them, let them help the crossing guards cross kids. Mm -hmm. We have COPs actually, when, when people go on vacation and we check their house, actually have COPs walking around the house, houses, checking the houses to make sure that's okay. Make sure the house is okay. Well, you tell me something. What happens that one time there's a burglar there? 
I mean, what happened just last week in Deltona? Lady comes home late at night. Somebody drops her off. She walks into her house, and there goes a burglar in her house. He grabs her by the neck. He cut, puts his hand around her, her, her mouth. He grabs her, you know, and then she breaks away. He grabs her arm. He slaps her. She breaks free, runs away. He goes after her again until the person that was in the car heard this commotion come running inside. So if this burglar is going to do that to an innocent person, what's going to happen to a citizen on patrol when they go around that house and there's somebody, they go face to face with a burglar with a gun? Do you think they're going to care if they're not, you know, to shoot this guy or a woman? No. But if it's a deputy sheriff, he got a gun too. He can defend himself. So I have issues with, with citizens on patrols checking houses. And under my administration, that will be no more. They will come out. COP is a program that's designed to be an extra pair of eyes and ears for law enforcement. That is it. Extra eyes and ears. Okay? We do have COP, Citizen on Patrol, that comes inside and helps with paperwork and, 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 and help out with different assignments. I have no issues with that. But I do have an issue with them walking around the houses. But we can utilize them to help crossing guards which I think is a fantastic idea, and we don't have to start getting rid of existing crossing guards. Mm -hmm. you know? um, there's so many other resources that we have inside that, that we can use to be more effective and efficient for Volusia County citizens. And you said, too, that uh, when you talk about new programs or, or reinstating some program that perhaps has been cut, cut or greatly reduced, uh, that it won't, from what you're sharing, that it won't cost more money. You know of ways and places to go to get the dollars that would uh, be able to fund those things? Well, the current administration, if, if you look inside, there's no transparency, so I can't tell you exactly where the money's at because no one's giving the information. But I can tell you that the current administration spends over $24,000 a quarter in overtime. 24,000 hours, I'm sorry, not dollars, hours in overtime. Over 100,000 hours a year in overtime. That money could be spent be, be spent better somewhere else in the community and in the sheriff's office. There's people within the sheriff's office that are civilians that came in that are 10 positions that are, that, that their pay averages up to 600,000 10 people, $600,000, civilians, positions that deputy sheriffs were handling prior to the current administration coming in. Once again, get rid of the bureaucracy that's inside, get rid of the cronyism inside, and then we can start making a difference for everybody within Volusia County. Uh, how can, if someone wants to be a part of your campaign, help you out, um, how do they contact you? I want to make sure we get this in so that we don't forget it before because we are going off earlier tonight at 7 p.m. because of the game, as usual. But uh, <laughs> uh, if someone wants to help you out, if they want to contact you, what is your website? Um, what what are, are your phone numbers if there's more than one? Uh, and, and what is it that you would love to have someone volunteer to do or where you have needs? Well, they can reach me at my website at BradfordForVolutionSheriff.com or they can contact me by phone at 386-233-1180. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. You can get me there. I need folks right now just to believe in me. That's the start of leadership. The start of leadership is when somebody believes in you, your ethics, your morals, what you believe in. And then they go, if they believe in what you believe in, they'll go out and they'll speak to people just like I would. Everything that I'm saying here today, if you need proof, call me. I'll be glad to meet with you and show you. We have to make some changes here. I need folks to be, out, be able to go out there, speak to other people, get them to believe in me, have me come talk to them so we can start making a difference now in Volusia County. We need to do something because if nothing is done now and we keep the same type of bureaucracy that's inside Volusia County, 
more innocent people are going to get hurt. And uh, you've said, because we do have a good 10 minutes, uh, you've said that the crime stats are available, the um, Attorney General uh, makes those stats uh, possible, and so that anyone can go and actually check them out. Is there a specific website that you go to? Or they can just go. Just put uh, Attorney General. Florida Attorney Florida. General, and then go to stats, and then you put your county in, and all that information is there. Uh, I mean, there's, there's information there about the jail, and about the, the sheriff's office and about uh, how many rapes we've had, how many robberies we've had, and it's all on the rise. It is mm -hmm. all on the rise, and you know, I mean, you know, each each year it goes up a little and little and a little and a little more. And I think this year, 2010, 2011, uh, has went up maybe 14 percent or 13 percent in reference to you know rapes and robberies and um, and we need to do something. We need to get cop we need to get law enforcement cops back on the street. I am a cop. Mm -hmm. I deal with people every day. I talk to people every day. I'm not sitting in an office where I'm becoming stagnant. When you sit in an office too long, you forget about what's going on around you. I don't want to stay in this job. I don't want to be a sheriff for 20 years. I want to be a sheriff for eight years, and then I want to have somebody else come up the rank that's going to take my position and take what I've done and make it better, enhance it, mm -hmm. and move on. Because let me tell you, you think you're in the 21st century right now? To me, Volusia County is moving backwards, and we need to do something now. I mean now. Now, the county uh, of Volusia's sheriff's uh, office is a constitutional office, but um, the sheriff actually goes through the county for his budget, which is a little bit different from what they have in some other uh, counties. That's correct. Yeah. How will, will you deal with the budget issue as it relates to uh, county council and um, and I don't believe the sheriff has had that much of a problem in terms of getting what he wants, but it is a little bit different, right? It is, and I'm going to fight for what I believe or what we believe that the county needs, and I'm going to fight for it. What I can do is this, not, not to butt heads with anybody, but if I go and I say this is what is needed, we've done the research, here's the research, this is what's needed, and it's not giving, then I can go to the people. Because the people are the county council's boss. The people are the, city, the county manager's boss. The people are the sheriff's boss. We all answer to the people. And I think that a lot of politicians have forgotten that the people are their boss. You know, when I first started here, when I first started with the sheriff's office, I mean, I, we used to hear all kinds of jokes, you know. You know, I pay your salary, you know, or here's your penny back, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but really, they do pay our salary. Yeah, they do. They pay our salary, and, and they expect service, quality service. And if you go to a store and you buy a washing machine, I hate to use this analogy, but if you buy a washing machine and the washing machine doesn't work well, and you call the repairman to come back to the same company, and they don't do a great service, and they take it back, and then you buy another washing machine from another person, and that washing machine works perfectly, what service do you think you're going to go back to? The second one. Mm -hmm. Okay? And right now, these deputies are just over, overwhelmed. And we need to start giving them some relief. We need to do something for them. And then we can start working on the people. Because if the deputies are happy, the deputies are satisfied, the deputies believe in their leadership, then they're going to show that when they go out there and do their job. They're going to be happy. They're going to go out there and say, man, I want to come to work today instead of, you know, I'm going to go find the nearest tree and go park because I'm afraid of I'm going to go out and do my job and I'm going to get retaliated against by my administration. We need to do something now, and that's what I stand for, now. Make a change now. Let's make a difference. And I promise you, and I say it on the radio station, I promise you that if I do not do 
What I tell you I'm going to do, 